Hello and welcome, everyone. You have walked into the, uh, to the Emergency Tubular LED Lighting Retrofit 101 webinar. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know via the chat box on your lower left-hand side. This webinar is sponsored and presented by Energy Focus. Energy Focus is located in sunny Solon, Ohio, and we are an LED lighting company that engineers and manufactures innovative lighting experiences by keeping energy efficiency, maintenance savings, improved health and safety in mind for all of our products. We offer products that range from LED tubes, retrofit kits, luminaires, and fixtures. A couple of house rules just before we start kicking off the webinar. Um, everyone is in listen-only mode, therefore your audio settings are muted. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, please, like I mentioned before, utilize the chat icon on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that will present a chat box which will be monitored and all conversations will remain uh, private between you and our moderator. Please feel free to send in your questions and comments during any time um, of this presentation. So from Energy Focus, we have Brian Dannison, who is our Director of Engineering. Brian and his team lead the development of all of our products, including our first emergency lighting solution called REDCAMP, um, which you'll touch upon during today's webinar. We also have Greg Fleece, uh, who is our project manager, also part of the engineering team, who will be answering your chat questions. So he'll be behind the scenes and viewing and answering all of the chat questions there. So please do keep all those chat questions coming. He also has been a very integral source during the development of our emergency lighting solutions. solutions. So um, a very great background on uh, emergency lighting and the red cap as well if you have any questions. My name is Yumi Alanoli, and I'm the product manager in the marketing team. And I'm very happy to be here today to transfer this knowledge on, emer on emergency lighting and on energy focus with you today. So our agenda, uh, what will it cover? Uh, our agenda today will cover what emergency lighting is, the regulations that were created for it, how to maintain emergency lighting, and how emergency lighting has developed during the times. We anticipate this to take 45 minutes with a couple of minutes towards the end to go through some questions that have been fielded by Greg. It is worth it to note that throughout this webinar, all emergency lighting uh, references will be focused on indoor emergency lighting. Um, I also wanted to mention that this webinar is recorded. Therefore, if you uh, happen to lose uh, connection for some reason during any time of this recording, um, you will be sent a follow-up email with a link to the recording as well. And um, I am taking a look at some of the chat questions here and there from time to time. So feel free to uh, pop in your questions. If you're having any technical issues, but definitely ask them through that chat monitor as well. So let's kick this off. So what is indoor emergency lighting? Indoor emergency lighting simply is the light that turn on automatically and provide a path to safety when the building experiences a sudden loss of main power. In the picture to the left shows you two LED lamps installed in a fixture. The right lamp is the red, with the red end cap is the emergency lamp, and the left lamp is the standard lamp. When the main power turns off, the emergency lamp automatically turns on as shown in the picture on the right. When you combine an emergency lamp or an emergency light with a backup power supply, it's commonly no known as the emergency lighting system. An emergency can be a blackout due to loss of main power, or it can be something more serious like fires or explosions, or something even more urgent like building collapses due to earthquakes or hurricanes or tornadoes. Following the emergency lights to safety is one of the most critical parts of an evacuation procedure. There is always a need for emergency lighting that functions automatically and properly. 
So when emergency lighting fails, victims do struggle to escape and situations could turn fatal. For example, it becomes extremely dangerous when victims are looking for a way out and turn to stairwells that are in complete darkness and unknowingly enter an area filled with smoke. This can happen. And the reason why it, it, it can be diverted is with a better emergency lighting system in place. Despite all of these standards, people still suffer personal injuries or worse just because their emergency lighting does not turn on. So in today's webinar, we'll definitely speak of uh, applications uh, where emergency lighting can be placed and exactly what proper functionality means. To talk about proper functionality, we'll definitely talk about two normal uh, types of emergency lighting systems. The first is an emergency light that contains its own power supply, like a battery, that's integrated into its hardware. Um, the pros on this type of emergency lighting system is that there's no additional cables that are required in the product where the backup power supply is integrated into the hardware and very minimal cabling if an external battery pack is utilized. So because uh, the cabling is quite minimal, the installations are usually fast. And also because they don't take too much time to install, the cost effectiveness is, is pretty prevalent. With the emergency power internal to the light, each luminaire is independent, which improves drastically the emergency lighting's integrity. There's no dependence on any external source. There's no dependent on, dependence on just one source. Every single luminaire is independent um, to its own system. Um, so this, this is just another way of making sure that when the lights do turn off for unexpected reasons, the emergency lighting system does act independently and turn on on its own. This also makes adding uh, to the existing emergency lighting system as easy as adding similar luminaires. A con could be uh, that everything is dependent on that battery. Um, and when I mean everything is dependent on the battery, the life of that emergency uh, system is dependent on that battery. Um, in addition, specifications of that uh, luminaire could also be dependent on that battery. So it's worth knowing what the temperature of the battery life is, uh, what the relative humidity um, restraints on that battery is, because that will be what the temperature and relative humidity restraints are for that entire system. The second type of emergency lighting is when your emergency power is supplied from a secondary external backup source. This could mean that the secondary source is an, ex is an external battery or an emergency, um, or an emergency outdoor generator. Um, you'll normally see this um, external battery in uh, emergency battery closets um, in hallways and industrial areas. You could also see this as huge generators um, next to buildings, um, also in commercial, industrial in commercial industrial areas as well. Um, the pros of having um, a secondary external backup source is that maintenance is extremely easy. Um, it, it also means that testing is also very easy because there's only one or two backup so sources to focus on. The life of the backup source is also increased because of using an external system. Because in reality, you're focused on these heavy-duty hardware um, that, that is there to withstand a long amount of time. So the battery source could last anywhere from 5 to 25 years. Of course, you do have to consider that with a bulkier system, the cost of installation does go up. And also, if there's any failure of the backup source or failure, failure in the wiring, it could result in a failure in a large part of that system. So these things are definitely things that should be considered when you're choosing the type of, of emergency lighting system. So this brings us to our first poll question. 
Um, and the way the poll questions work in this forum is um, we'll present the poll questions like this one. How do you find out more information on emergency lighting? And you can take a couple of moments to go ahead and answer the question. You can only choose one out of the four options. As soon as you answer the question, you will see the results um, of the audience around us. This is a neat way of understanding who else is in, in the room. Um, and this also gives us more information um, just to understand how you go about finding more information on emergency lighting. I'll go ahead and give you a couple of seconds. I do see uh, the answers um, or the selections coming in right now. Okay, I'll give, a, I'll give it a couple more seconds before I just stop and skip to the results. Um, we've got more than half of the audience who has entered here, um, so a really good amount. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop, skip to the results right now. Wow. Okay, so as you can see, uh, more than half of the audience has vendor website. Um, and that's also a very good way to uh, find out more information because a vendor's website definitely tells you a lot about what products are out there. Um, <clears throat> you can see that a close second is uh, online searches, Google, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, social media is an incredible tool um, and can be utilized uh, quite, quite frequently by everyone that I, you know, from this poll. Um, a close third, colleague references, that's very good to know. And only 3.1% um, of the audience find that trade shows are a good way to find out more information on emergency lighting. This is really good information. Thank you everyone for participating. We do have a couple more polls um, on this on this webinar, um, so stay tuned. Um, but as we keep going, um, we do want to talk about more on the types of emergency lighting systems. Um, there are a lot of emergency lighting um, lamps and systems in the market. Um, for instance, there are electrical type systems where um, you just see an exit sign that will illuminate when there is an emergency. You'll also see emergency direction signs that turn on during that emergency as well. Um, you can also see fluorescent ballasts that are hidden inside luminaires. Um, and, the, and the way an emergency fluorescent ballast works is that these are just um, either external batteries or fluorescent ballasts that are connected to your existing tube, which is normally a fluorescent tube. You also um, see emergency lights that are on the wall that are kind of called bug-eye emergency lights. Um, the name is justified by the similar resemblance to actual bug-eyes, so it's easy to, easy to note and easy to search for. And most recently, you will see a lot of emergency tubular LED lighting in the market. Um, that have uh, integrated batteries um, inside of its system, inside of the physical hardware, uh, which we'll get to in plenty more detail. Um, next poll question, after learning more about the types of emergency lighting in, there, in the market, what type of emergency lighting are you using in your facility? So some of the uh, options would be wall-mountable emergency lighting, like bug eyes. Um, we also have fluorescent emergency ballasts with external battery packs that can be utilized as well inside of luminaires. Another option would be the LED tubes with external battery packs. The difference here is that you're using an LED tube instead of a fluorescent tube uh, between option two and three. You could not use an emergency lighting system, or you might not know. I'll give it a couple more seconds for uh, some of the poll results to fill in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and skip to the result. Wow. Okay. So a good half of the audience is using wall-mountable emergency lighting like bug eyes. And this is not surprising because, um, because this is the most popular that's uh, in the market right now. 
Uh, but it's always good to know what other types of emergency lighting uh, the audience is using. I do see a, a very small percentage that uh, do not use emergency lighting. Um, and I hope that by going through today's webinar, um, it encourage you, encourages you to implement some of the emergency lighting systems that, that will be discussed. Thank you very much for going through this. When we do talk about emergency lighting, um, I do want to stop and talk about all the applications that emergency lighting can be used in. And really, anywhere that there is light, there could be emergency lighting. Uh, since emergency lighting is designed really to illuminate and identify hallways, stairwells, and exits to, facil to facilitate a safe evacuation, emergency lighting can really be used in so many different types of applications. Many schools and hospitals have actually made emergency lighting a requirement in their lighting systems. Uh, schools will utilize emergency lighting in their stairways and in their hallways. Hospitals will utilize emergency lighting in similar locations, but also in areas like their operating rooms. Um, and it, it makes sense because in such an important facility um, that is run on power, you definitely want a fail-safe or a backup to that power. Um, most hospitals that require emergency power constantly will have a secondary system uh, for, for power just in case the first system fails. You know, so there's always a fail-safe when it comes to emergency lighting. All right, and at this time, I would like to hand it off to Brian to talk about emergency lighting regulations. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Yumi. Um, I'm going to take a couple of slides to go over uh, the regulatory and compliance uh, rules that uh, most lighting manufacturers use to develop their emergency lighting. So uh, OSHA is uh, one of the regulatory agencies that we typically try to follow, and basically they require that uh, you have adequate and reliable illumination for all your exits. And then they also uh, require proper maintenance to assure that uh, the exit lighting is continuously in proper uh, operating condition. Uh, UL 924, which is what our product was tested to, uh, along with some additional testing that they created since it was uh, such a unique product with the integrated batteries. It was the first of its kind to be listed uh, for emergency retrofit use. So uh, if you do have to modify your fixture and install it, uh, you will not be using, losing your UL rating. Uh, the National Electric Code, they typically um, specify the amount of illumination and performance that your emergency and exit lights uh, need to perform to, uh, as well as sort of the functional standards of uh, battery-powered emergency and exit lighting. And then you got uh, the International Building Code and International Fire Code. Again, uh, they're focused mostly on proper illumination uh, for means of egress and assurance that the emergency and exit lighting systems are uh, providing illumination for the required amount of time. Uh, something not listed here on the slide is uh, our red cap is listed uh, with DLC. So go out there and get your rebates. Um, it is also a low flicker verified product, which uh, was another first we had with UL. So the main, uh, the top four things that most of those regulatory uh, agencies require is that we have some sort of circuitry that you can detect that main power is off. And once it is detected that it's off, that it will automatically illuminate in emergency situations. Um, it should then function for 90 minutes on its own power source and also have an indicator light uh, for maintenance. So our indicator light communicates uh, several failure modes which mostly circle around ensuring that uh, the health of the batteries and that they are going to uh, are being properly charged. And with that, we're on to another poll question that I'll hand over to Yumi. Yep. Um, thank you, Brian. So this poll question uh, asks, is UL approval, like UL 924, in emergency lighting important for your organization? 
I'll go ahead and leave this open for a couple more seconds. But uh, I see you all are getting the hang of these poll questions. The results are coming in much quicker this time. Okay, um, I will go ahead and close the poll and skip to the results. Thank you, everyone, for participating. A whopping 85.5% of the audience says, yes, UL approval in emergency lighting is important for your organization. Um, and this is, uh, very, um, this is very positive for us, and this is very important for the audience and anyone looking into emergency lighting to know, uh, because asking your vendor, is this product UL approved, is a great question. Um, so definitely uh, throw that out to, you, to all the vendors in the market. You do know that um, Energy Focus's red cap is UL approved, um, specifically for UL 924. Um, so feel free to um, continue asking that question and keep those questions coming via chat. I'm going to go ahead um, and go on to the next section, which piggybacks on what Brian had mentioned, really on the maintenance of the emergency lighting. Um, because with every light that we offer, every light that's installed, um, we don't just look to follow a regulation. We also want to make sure that maintaining that light is understood and that we incorporate tools in that lighting, in that product, to make maintenance easier. So there are two times when maintenance of emergency lighting is recommended. Um, once, uh, one time would be once a month where you locate that emergency light and utilize the push to test switch. Basically, this switch, uh, by pressing the switch, it will interrupt the normal AC flow into the unit and automatically tells the circuitry it's time to switch to the battery or it's time to switch to the secondary power source. Your emergency lighting should stay illuminated if your emergency lighting is used as your standard lighting or it should automatically illuminate if it's separate. Um, and once you've confirmed this, you can move on to the next emergency light. So utilizing that push to test switch is a very good uh, practice to maintain your emergency lighting. Additionally, once a year, your emergency maintenance requires more attention. And this step number two is normally done after hours since it requires the main power to be off for a full 90 minutes. Uh, by regulation, this is how long emergency lighting should stay on for. Uh, maintenance teams will usually deactivate all the circuits, so it initiates the emergency systems to turn on, and then they can observe and validate that, yep, all of the emergency systems have turned on. Um, UL 924 does provide some best practices. And it is definitely worth going through some of the best practices in recording or during maintenance here today. Best practice number <clears throat> best practice number one, always note the date of the inspection. Um, this way you know when to actually do the next inspection on time. Number two, location of the fixture. Know where your fixtures are. Know where those emergency lighting systems are. Number three, note the name of the maintenance person. And when they finish or during the job of the maintenance, make sure there's some signatures or initialization of that maintenance person. And lastly, note the status of the fixture. And if there was any corrective maintenance performed, what was that? And if there's any notes afterwards to follow up on what they are as well. And lastly, um, uh, maybe not last, it is lastly, but uh, on the slide, but it is important to definitely understand what your vendor's warranty is. So know your warranties. Um, warranties can be provided for two plus years. They can, they can, uh, I've seen warranties in the market for two years, three years, five years. It's always a good idea to ask your vendor, though, for more information on that warranty. A good question would be, will the warranty cover the batteries? And can you get into further detail on what that coverage is? End users could get cheated on that warranty because some manufacturers only provide a two-year warranty on the battery, but a five-year warranty on the light operation. So what is it? Is it really a five-year warranty? Is it a two-year warranty? So it's a good idea. It can get confusing. So it's a good idea to understand what's covered and asking a lot of questions to your vendor is key. 
Um, energy focus for our red cap, we do offer a five-year warranty that does include the battery and all components from end to end of that lamp. Um, so that's just something to note. Um, this does lead us to a lot more talk on the red cap and on innovation in indoor emergency lighting. And I'll go ahead and give it to Brian um, to continue. All right. So we'll take you through sort of the uh, current state of things and a little bit of an evolution of emergency lighting. Um, in, in certain buildings, you'll have uh, one power source to power all the distributed emergency lighting. Typically, that's uh, you know a battery pack or uh, a generator type power. And then uh, a lot of people are familiar with this, which is basically uh, you have localized battery power at the light source, so utilizing the components in the ballast and fluorescent tubes and whatnot. And then you get onto our red cap product, um, which is essentially fully integrated battery power source with, uh, along with the emergency lighting source, um, all in our existing high performance tubular LED lamp. And if you look at our traditional sort of wiring package of that localized battery source, you'll have, you know, a half a dozen or so components that include the, uh, the actual ballast, the battery pack or the emergency ballast that we show there, so a battery enable, an indicator light, um, all individual separate components that are uh, within the fixture. If you go to our uh, current schematic, you'll see how that basically simplifies. All those external type components have all now been integrated into a singular lamp that you can easily install and replace should it need be. And you get a little visual, basic visualization uh, of what, what that includes. We have our nickel metal halide batteries, airplane safe. Um, charging and discharging uh, in a circuitry, and then we have an indicator light that you'll see through the diffuser um, telling you what kind of maintenance state it's in. So in su summary, moving to the new um, innovation of this, you're getting basically standard lamp uh, performance uh, with all the emergency uh, components integrated in, into it. Uh, all the external battery packs, the drivers, uh, switch panels, uh, all integrated into one lamp. You get more efficiency because you're using 140 lumen per watt uh, lamp body that we sell, and you no longer have to have a ballast. Um, it is a direct wire type B installation type, uh, less maintenance, five-year warranty, end to end, um, and it is UL certified to be integrated into existing luminaires. And with that, I'm going to hit you with the last poll question here. So do you use energy focused products already? And I'll wait uh, a few minutes for you guys to answer that, and we'll get into some Q&A. All right, it looks like over 60% of people are using our products. That's awesome. Yeah, that's actually um, a very nice number to see. It gives us a good idea of who's in the audience. All right, Yumi, I'm going to let you run the show on Q&A. Okay. Um, 
So uh, we definitely have gotten a lot of questions from the Q&A side uh, or for the, from the chat side. Um, I'm just going through some of the questions right now. Um, and let's see here. Okay, um, Kevin has asked, um, are red caps uh, wired just like direct wire tubes? Um, and Brian had um, just touched upon that earlier, that the red caps are direct wire tubes. Um, Brian, do you want to elaborate on direct wire and what the difference between direct wire and direct fit uh, could actually uh, mean? Uh, I mean, the main difference is that you would have to uh, wire into the um, constant power that your existing emergency system has. So they do wire up similar to the direct wire lamps. You just have to enable the lamp uh, with the circuitry that, from the existing EM unit that you had there. Got it. Okay, we're getting a bunch more questions now. Um, uh, Kenneth um, has asked, one of the issues we have had with trying to use LEDs is that we have to modify the existing fixture doing, uh, and doing that voids the UL rating on the fixture. Do your lights require modification of the existing fixture? And um, Kenneth, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to take this one here. Um, yes, uh, when, when, you, when you use our red cap, you do, it is a standard uh, TLED that you have to install into a fixture. And we can provide uh, standard lamps along with uh, the emergency battery backup lamp as well. We can provide a 10 to 1 or a 5 to 1 ratio of standard and emergency lamps. Um, but it is worth noting that the red cap is UL specified as a retrofit kit. So it does not void the fixture UL rating, um, but covers the fixture as part of the retrofit certification. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, Brian, did you have anything to add on that? Nope, I touched on that uh, during the slides. I mean, it's, uh, it's approved by UL for retrofit, so you're not going to be voiding any uh, UL rating if you modify your right. fixture to install it. Yep. Great. Um, Tim has asked, um, do all of the entities uh, uh, for regulations, do all of these regulations have identical entities or are they slightly different? Um, in other words, do they, uh, are they contrary to each other in any way? Not an expert on it, but uh, there's basically nothing that really conflicts with each other. They all go after the same sort of uh, regulatory and compliance requirements with regards to illumination, and uh, amount of time the illumination has to stay on. Got it. Yeah, we, we also did cover just the standard um, procedures or the standard functionalities of what an emergency lighting system should cover as well. Um, and they were fairly the same. Um, uh, we've got another question. Is there a way to test the emergency lighting other than turning off the power. Yeah, there's a test. There's a, there's a test switch uh, on the fixture that you can depress. Got it. Um, another question from Terry: um, Do the emergency lamps drive at full power? Uh, they do drive at full power for the initial um, illumination. Okay, um, another question that's coming in, can the emergency light stay on for longer than 90 minutes? Well, um, it's, our lamps have been tested to stay on longer than that, but we, we meet the minimum, which is 90. Um, okay, another question that's coming in. Um, is there a delay in the emergency lighting when it turns on during a power failure? Um, I would say unnoticeable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty and, much, and it's I pretty guess, much instant um, on. 
instant on. I, and I would also note that, um, you know, there are some emergency lighting systems uh, where the emergency lighting is turned is the same as your standard lamp. So that standard lamp is already on. So when that lamp does detect that the uh, main power has turned off, it just switches over to emergency power, uh, emergency mode uh, automatically, almost instantly. And you should not you should not see a change, you know, in, in either a turn off of the lamp and turning on again. Um, so it should definitely be instantly uh, for most emergency lighting systems. Uh, we've got another question asking, um, will the lamp uh, light CCT be, dim, be more dim than the actual standard light? So I guess is there a color difference uh, when the emergency lighting turns on? No. Well, the other lights are off if the emergency lighting turns on. But ah, if they're just yeah, all right, operating, right. there is no difference in color or uh, output. No, the lumen output and color are consistent with uh, standard lighting. Okay. And does the lamp stay on full power for a full 90 minutes? No, they do not. And that's uh, by standard code, right? Um, it states that's exactly. That's all standard code, right? Yep. Okay. It comes down um, right, to the looking, number of foot candles per square foot, uh, which is what it's based on. So it meets all those it. building requirements. Got it. Um, I'm just waiting on a couple more questions. I do see some typing going on. Um, let's see. Okay, a great question from Kirk. Are there any waste or recycling issues once the tubes are at the end of life? I'm sorry, what was that? Um, and the question what? was, are there, are there any waste or recycling issues once the tubes are at end of life? Uh, we would just ask you to send them back to us if they weren't, weren't working. Yeah. All right. Um, what I'll go ahead and do, um, I know that everybody is uh, sending a lot more questions in right now. But I'm going to stop the Q&A session here um, and just proceed um, with the webinar. Uh, this doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, continue sending your questions. Um, I would just um, note that we'll probably answer your questions uh, directly to you via the chat box. Thank you, everyone, for um, submitting those questions. I think this is a great Q&A session. Um, just to summarize uh, the actual webinar, um, we did go through uh, how emergency lighting works and why emergency lighting is is there for a reason, um, right? It, it is there to save lives. And I know that emergency lighting can be somewhat of a burden um, because it's another it's another light that you have to purchase. It's another installation that you have to perform, and it's another maintenance that needs to be done. Um, but it really does save lives, and it's an absolute requirement in some applications. And it's become so popular, um, emergency lighting has become so popular, and again, such a requirement that there have been plenty of regulations that have been introduced into the market. We have OSHA regulations, UL 924 regulations, and you see codes that a lot of buildings have to comply with, international building codes, international fire codes. Um, this is how important emergency lighting has gotten, um, that we have regulations that improve its function and improve its performance. Ma maintaining emergency lighting is now just as important as, um, as installing emergency lighting. And hopefully by going through this webinar, um, maintaining emergency lighting has become clearer. Um, and lastly, emergency lighting is improving. We've seen a big improvement on the standard bug eyes that were uh, very popular and still popular today to fully integrated LED tubes. So high performance emergency lighting solutions on the market today, they don't just meet the regulations um, and codes that we spoke about, but they totally exceed some of those codes. This shows that emergency lighting is being taken seriously and although Again, it can be a burden. A lot of building managers are following all of these guidelines. And yes, there is a lot out there to consider. Um, there's a lot of cost of the lamp, ease of the installation, monthly and yearly maintenance, disposal that we had talked about, replacing 
um, emergency lamp. But even if a single life can be saved or an injury averted due to an emergency lighting solution, this is a reliable and, and high performance requirement um, for most buildings. And the decision to exceed specifications can easily be justified um, in, in that alone. So um, thank you for, for joining this webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to contact anybody from the Energy Focus team. You've got mine, um, Brian, and Greg's email addresses on the screen. Feel free to contact us at tech support at energyfocus.com as well. This is our tech support email address. Or uh, feel free to call us at 800-327-7877. On our website, um, you will find more information on emergency lighting and more information on the red cap. We do have a product video up as well and a white paper that will be released. Um, you will be able to um, hear a recording of this webinar in a follow-up email. Um, feel free to follow us as well on all of our social media platforms. We constantly provide more information on the emergency lighting market um, as well as all of the uh, lighting markets and products that we offer. If you have any questions, feel free to send them out to us in that chat box. Um, if we haven't gotten to your question, because I do understand that towards the end of this um, webinar, a lot more questions were submitted. If we haven't gotten to your question, please note that we will follow up via email with you. Um, thank you very much for attending this webinar. This does conclude the webinar. <laughs>